Doug Williams here in our SNY studios to give you a live listen to the Mets conference call. Sandy Alderson, Jeff Wilpon, Jonas Cespedes' agent, all going to be available. Take a listen. Question. So, Sandy, it's all yours, sir. Okay. Thanks, Jack. And thanks, everybody, for uh, being on the call. Um, uh, obviously, we announced uh, last night that uh, Jonas Cespedes had uh, re-signed with the Mets for three years uh, with a one year out. We're, we're of course very pleased that uh, he wanted to come back to New York and that uh, we were able to uh, reach an agreement. Um, I think it's important to point out that Joannis um, um, did want to come back and uh, uh, made compromises in order for that to be possible. Uh, from our standpoint, I'm extremely thankful for uh, Jeff's involvement in this, as well as uh, the willingness of uh, Fred Wilpon and, and Saul Katz uh, to uh, um, make this commitment. So we're very happy to have him back. We uh, look forward to spring training, and um, I'll turn this over to uh, Uranus agent um, Brody Van Wagenen. Brody? Thanks. Thanks, Sandy, and thanks, Jay, for uh, for setting this up. Yeah, just let me let me echo what Sandy said, and, and first on on behalf of Yoenis and his team at CAA and Rock Nation, want to thank the entire Mets organization for their efforts in making making this signing possible. Uh, in particular, Sandy's patience and conviction were instrumental throughout the process, and Jeff's willingness to push this deal to the finish line is a testament to the Wilpon family's commitment to giving Mets fans the championship caliber team that they deserve. Uh, I think it was a group effort on, on the Mets organization from a lot of different, different folks involved. And as Sandy said, this was an important moment for Yoenis. This was a place where he thoroughly enjoyed his time in New York. He was comfortable with the city. He was comfortable with the fans. And New York is also a place where he and his teammates achieved tremendous success together. As I told Sandy, Yoannis has a real desire to continue that narrative and accomplish great things here moving forward. Okay. Thank you, Brody. Hey, Operator, I think we're ready for instructions for questions, please. At this time, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Your first question comes from Adam Rubin. Great. Thanks, guys. Brody, if I can may start with you. Uh, you mentioned his allure for, for returning to New York. How much of it also was a business decision in that if he does opt out a year from now, given the, the free agent class, that it, it may be far more lucrative for him? Well, I think in, in free agency, it, it's rare to have all things be equal. Uh, we were very candid with Sandy that this situation would likely not come down to an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of the players' choices. And I think both sides remain committed to keeping an open mind on creative deal structures. Uh, you know, clearly the player had a, a desire to, to be here, and he had uh, motivation to structure a deal that, that not only kept him here but also accomplished his goals of having him properly valued and properly placed within not only this market, but also within his, his outfield peers across the game. And I think he was, at the end of the day, very appreciative to, to the Mets for their recognition of his talent and validating him with a, with a contract that had an AAV and an overall guarantee that, that in, at least in his mind, properly placed him with, uh, with the right value in the marketplace for the game and also kept him kept him in New York Great. and Sandy may I just ask uh, when you agreed I guess in September to waive or, or have the right to continue to negotiate did you ever think at that point that it would actually materialize and uh, when when did it actually seem realistic to you that it, that it could materialize well I, I think we all we, we always try to, to think positively and so uh, when the restrictive clause was changed to allow us uh, further time to negotiate, uh, I viewed that as a positive. And um, not that I ever feel that, uh, you know, there's a, there's a probability that a free agent is going to sign with, with us. Uh, there are lots of unforeseen circumstances that arise, but I did view it as positive. Um, with respect to 
you know, exactly when I thought this was possible. Um, it, it's hard to say. Uh, you know, the only thing that I said publicly was that we were staying in touch with Brody. And, um, you know, that wasn't on a day-to-day -day basis, but it was frequent enough for us uh, to know each other's um, uh, state of mind from time to time. Um, I think when I began to feel as if uh, uh, we had a chance for this to work was when I asked Brody the question, does Ulenis want to come back to New York? And, and the answer from Brody was yes. And then secondly, uh, Brody asked me a question, which was, are you in it to win it? So I recall that was the exact phraseology. And I said, yes. So as we you know, began to uh, circle around the, uh, the issues, and get more direct, uh, you know, I felt sort of that last week that we were getting to a point where, where it was where it was a possibility. Uh, but it wasn't really until very late that uh, I thought it was a probability. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Your next question comes from Pete McCarthy. How strong a push was there from ownership? Would you say the front office pushed harder to make this happen, or was this, um, you know, spirit a little bit more by uh, by the top? Uh, well, this is Sandy. I guess I'll I'll try to answer that question. Look, uh, you know, uh, the front office was the point for this, so the conversations were between the front office and and uh, UNS, uh representatives, but. Um, there was certainly uh, continuing communication uh, between the front office and ownership, and um, I think an understanding of uh, and a confidence that if, if we continued to talk, uh, that ownership would definitely be supportive of something reasonable. So um, uh, I really can't say that it was the front office or ownership. It was really... Um, a constant communication between, look, we're only 10 feet apart, so uh, there was constant communication over this topic. Here, Sandy, I'll, I'll jump in. It, it was the right time to get the deal done, I would say, Pete, um, as, as well as part of the plan that we went into the off season with. Um, and when it came time to move on it, we were in a position where we could move on it fairly quickly. Our next question comes from Ronald Bloom. Hi, Sandy. How important in this is it that if he opts out after one year and goes elsewhere, you guys are able to make a qualifying offer and get a draft pick back if he leaves? Well, I would say that, uh, Ron, that was part of the equation. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're certainly to the extent that, uh, uh, there would be value coming back in the event of an opt-out. Um, that would certainly be a consideration. Uh, certainly wasn't the prime motivation, but uh, um, you know, on the other hand, it's 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 uh, it's part of the equation, part of what we had to evaluate. Uh, 